hello yeah hello yeah um, uh, this is gopi yeah, am i speaking with uh, sudhir nimagadda yeah yeah just yeah. speaking uh, yeah gopi yeah we got your resume for uh, rpa developer position okay yeah is this the right time to take uh, technical interview yeah you can take uh, okay okay yeah um, can you uh, tell me about your uh, technical experiences yeah uh, so last few years almost i am working in ui part automation uh, tool mm-hmm. so uh, so i completed my certifications in ui part okay and uh, okay so a uh, few pro- projects so last few projects we work with uh, i have experience in uh, web automation and desktop automation uh, pdf and uh, excel automation okay uh, yeah my current project is uh, it's like a uh, school project actually okay. so basically so this school branches are all over the world so there is a different branches are there so like a bangalore chennai hyderabad so in the bangalore itself so there is a lot of branches uh, franchises are there so so basically the board so the current bo- current project so we develop like a, so every every day it will run okay. every day it will search for each and every location mm-hmm. while so you know, there is a uh, school website is there so within the school website we go to each and every uh, location like a, so selecting the country and after that uh, it is at the state okay it is at the city name so within the city there is multiple branches will come okay these information so the state name and city name uh, state name and country name and city name okay it is there in the input excel mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so the robot will read the input excel mm-hmm. uh, and uh, open the browser mm-hmm. and go to the particular location and uh, go on search search for that uh, rating so basically it will go for the google rating okay. for each branch and it will read the all the reviews the, the uh, listening or reviews that mean so what are all the bad reviews uh, so are there okay. Okay. it's not like a good reviews so they have to monitor the bad reviews and uh, do some action on that particular branch that is what main agenda for that project mm-hmm. okay. the robot will execute every day and uh, uh that mean update the excel if there is any uh, bad reviews that mean uh, low low rating reviews okay in the google okay. Okay. that is my current project so it, it uh, so i learned the uh, web automation so it's involved the web automation excel automation mm. or uh, email automation everything mm. yeah okay mr sudhir uh, we'll discuss some technical info now Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, what what is the difference between sequence and the flowchart? Um, the difference between the sequence and flowchart. So these two are the containers. The sequence is the like a, so if we have any sequential steps like a open a website and uh, uh, type the username and type the password and click on the sign in button. So any sequential steps. So, so without having the many uh, conditional based kind of thing. so we can use a sequence container these are all the just containers and if you if the requirement contains the more uh, conditional based uh, uh, things like a, if this condition is true uh, the flow has to go in the true true basis and uh, the condition is false it has to go to the uh, false uh, uh, tree so in, 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 if the requirement contains a lot of conditions then we can go with the flow flow chart actually no. and as these two are the two are the containers so basically we can use uh, vice versa so we can use the content uh, sequence within the flow chart and we can use the flow chart within the sequence okay okay uh, yeah, and, and uh, mm, uh, what is an attended bot and an attend unattended bot okay so <laughs> there is a there is a two types of bots are there one is attended and um, and there was unattended so basically the name itself it is uh, saying that attendance that mean human presence is required to uh, run the attended bot so it's like a trigger by the user so user judgment is required so attended bots are like a so trigger by the users 
uh, based on their uh, i mean uh, their requirement okay uh, they can trigger by based on the shocker keys or they, they can trigger by sending the mails anything that is attend the board so human and robot will work together and complete the pro, uh, task actually okay. the whole process that is attended okay. uh, the unattended means so, so human intervention or human judgment is not required so the robot is uh, basically uh, run uh, independently so we are scheduling the boss basically we schedule the boss so the boss which runs every one hour or every every day evening we can schedule it at the like a, so every weekend so it has to run so basically so it won't require any human intervention and human judgment that is called we, we are calling as a unattended boss basically so where we are scheduling the boss those boss are called unattended boss so where we are triggering uh, on the basis of our requirement uh, when uh, on the basis of our need that is a attended boss okay. yeah that is a, uh, basically the difference between those two okay how to handle exception in the workflow yeah uh, you were talking about uh, so how can we handle the exceptions in our project exception uh, in the workflow okay so basically the in the workflows so um, so by using the try and catch so there is an activity called try and catch so basically the exceptions are like a a run time errors so it will come in the run time mm. uh, there is a different type of exceptions are there mm. uh, basically we will the, the, there is a two types of categories like application exception and the uh, uh, business exception so basically in application exception you can call like a system exception also Uh, system exception means the system has some exception sometimes the browser while you are typing something into the browser uh, in as in there is a form okay you fill in the first name and last name there is more fields you have to type suddenly the browser is hanged browser is not responding so that type of exception so that that time they that may be uh, in a, a self or not found exception will occur the system is not responding sometimes uh, the file file not found exception is uh, occurred so, so so these are all the system based exceptions system exceptions so to handle the such type of exceptions we can use the try and catch block there is a three blocks are there okay. there is a try block catch block and finally block mm. so we will keep the code where we can uh, expect there is a, there might be uh, a chance as to get exceptions that type of code we will keep that into the try block so once any exception occurred in the try block that that will trigger to the catch block that will go to the catch block so in the catch block also we have we can have many type of catches that mm-hmm. means mm-hmm. there is a specific catch we can handle basically we are handling the exception we are not solving the exception that means we are not solving the problem mm-hmm. by handling the exception Hmm. okay hmm. so something like so once the exception occurred if you want to intimate the user or if you want to intimate the technical team there is some error occurred in the uh, process uh, so you can you can do the send mail activities these things and all log messages the whole code how can, how you want to handle these things and all in the catch block there's a second block is the catch block when exception occurred in the try block then only the catch block will execute mm-hmm. and the final block will execute always so when the exception occurred also it will execute and the exception not occurred also it gets you execute so there we we can clean if there is a clean up code so closing all the applications or or anything like a closing the uh, connections so, so database connections this and all that type of code we will write into the final block and there is a two types of exceptions like a, a system exception and an application a business exception so we can throw the business exception uh, on demand that means on demand so if the business has a requirement like a, the balance uh, the account balance should be a below 500 so if it is not below if it is if it is a below 500 we have to throw the exception okay. so that such kind of things the, the column like a debit or credit credit column should not be empty if there is no a, any empty column empty cell value is there So then we have to throw the exception this is a, this is a business rule exception okay so we can throw the business rule exception by using the throw activity mm. okay and there is a finally there is a uh, one more activity called retro 
So if you if you don't want to handle any exceptions in the child catch block, so you can re-throw that exception into the parent catch, the parent block by using the just retro activity. So that is about the exception handling. By using the exception uh, parent catch, we can handle the exceptions in our workflows. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, uh, yeah, Gopi. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sudhir, uh, can we schedule process without using orchestrator schedules? uh yeah so without using the orchestrator schedule scheduler uh we can schedule the uh, process yeah so yeah we can schedule by using the task scheduler in the operating system there is a uh, uh there is a one mechanism called task scheduler by using the task scheduler and ui report dot exe so we can schedule the uh, uh process so some people who, who i mean some organizations they don't bear the price license costs of the orchestrator they can use the task scheduler mm -hmm. yeah by using the task scheduler we can schedule without okay. using the orchestrator scheduler yeah. okay well uh, yeah uh, what is the difference between log message and uh, write line okay so there is a two types of activities log message and uh, uh, what is the another one uh, write line log message and write line okay yes. so uh, both are doing for the logging the message in the output panel but the write line which will just log the i mean uh, trace for the tracing purposes so it, it will just write the some line in the output panel in the studio mm -hmm. so that's it so so if you use the log message there is advantages in the log messages so it has you can set the levels like a log level uh, it may be you can set for the log as information or warning or you can set the error message or set an error there is a uh, uh trace trace like that so you can set the log level and log message the 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 biggest uh, advantage of the log message is not only seeing the log message into the output panel in the studio you can see the log messages in the into the orchestrator also while you are take schedule the process mm -hmm. into the orchestrator so while you are running so without using the ui path studio right so we can see the log messages from the orchestrator job stage Mm -hmm. Okay. When you use the log message, when you use the write line, you don't see from the orchestrator. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the one difference. And also one more difference is on level. We can set the level log level in the log message, but uh, uh, we can't set the um, level in the uh, write line. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. One more. Uh, what is retry scope and where will we use it in real time? Yeah, uh, yeah, you got you got you got my question right. Yeah, uh, retrace scope, right? Yeah. Ha, huh, yeah. So retrace scope basically, so uh, there is an activity called retrace scope. Uh, that retrace scope where we can use. So if you want to retrace the same type of work, if, if that work is failed, suppose for example. Uh, sometimes we are usually uh, logging, so logging by using the user and password and click on sign in button. Sometimes it fails. So what we do uh, as a human, so we will retry. Uh, in the same way, we are retrying the same type of work if it is a fail. So in the retry scope activity, there is a two uh, things. So one is the uh, the block retry block. The another thing is a, a like a condition. Okay, mm -hmm. in the retry block. The retry block. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is so where we uh, we will put the all the code which we want to retry. Okay. So for example, if you say login uh, login code, so you're typing the username and writing the password and uh, uh, click on the sign in button. So if that is not login properly, that means in the condition block in the retry scope in the condition block, uh, we will use the activity which returns the boolean value that means if the that returns the true that means it is success mm. it's not uh, no need to retry and also retry scope has a, a, a time a, a interval time that means so how much time uh, we, uh, it has to wait for each retry that is one and another one is the how many number of times you have to retry the mm. number of times to retry also we can set that is one property retry count okay we can set retry interval in the process. Okay. Okay, so there, uh, I have uh, some scenario. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, we have uh, some uh, uh, 
data from uh, data in html data in web mm-hmm. okay uh, in the data we have uh, some letter called accounting some word okay. word called accounting so mm-hmm. in the, uh, in the data table uh, the ro- uh, bot has to remove accounting word from the cell okay okay uh, okay and uh, you, you, I, you should yeah. get it as uh, uh, you should get the output as excel uh you saying there is an html table okay yeah right yeah uh and when it's in level where we we have a uh, what we have to replace so, so something is uh, coming some, in some uh, word is there like uh, accounting okay in the so, uh, uh, some cell oh okay so okay, uh, again in the cell like first cell uh, first yeah, column first yeah. column has a lot of cells yeah. uh, the bot has to okay. do uh, what uh, the bot should do is uh, remove the word accounting from that cell okay so and, what i understood uh, what i understood is so uh, uh, just correct me if i wrong okay? okay so my understanding is it's uh, having a html table in the web yeah. so bot has to scrap the data mm-hmm. and within that data mm-hmm. in, the, in the one one column any any column or uh, that has a lot of uh, data so within that any some, some records yeah. some cells have the uh, some accounting right accounting uh, word yeah so bot has to remove that accounting word yeah uh, from that column yeah. uh, so for example we can take the first column or second column right mm. and the, yeah. and the bot has yeah. to save uh, the output as excel okay so after removing the, that word from that particular column yes it has to save in the excel yeah, yeah. is it is it uh, correct yes exactly okay yeah uh, uh, please explain uh, please uh, elaborate it in uh, step uh, step step wise Uh, okay yeah uh, yeah so in that case so we will take a uh, normal one sequence so so what's so in the sequence uh, we'll use a, uh, some open browser so we'll open that particular website after that so we will use the data scraping to scrap the data so anyway as it is a html table it will pick identify that uh, as a html uh, table format uh once that data scraping done so the output of the the data scraping is a uh, data table so it will get the all the data into the data table so in that data table it has in all the all the data so including with that uh, word called accounting for example the first column we have to replace the uh, wherever the cell has the accounting word we have to re- remove right mm-hmm. so what we will do so we will use the for each row activity uh for each activity so you uh, the output of the data scraping is a data table so we will use the same data table so in the for each row activity so the row the row represents the temporary variable called row represents so each row in that particular data table so within the row we have to find the first column so we have to clean the first column that is clean in the sense so re- removing the accounting word wherever it is uh, uh, the first column cell has a accounting word we have to re- re- remove that so in the for each row activity we we'll use a assign activity uh, in the assign activity in the left side there is a row of zero that's a row of zero in the left, uh, right side box so we will use a row of zero dot to string dot uh, replace replace is a method string method replace um, back row time in the double quotes the word which we want to remove accounting in the double quotes close comma empty double quotes So, so so instead of accounting uh, in the cell uh, zero it will replace with the empty so once the for each row activity is done so the output uh, having the, the fresh data table which does not have a accounting word in the first column mm-hmm. so that uh, data table uh, we will use the right range activity uh, to write the uh, output data table into the excel basically yes. no. we will use that uh, Uh, uh excel path and the sheet name and the range and data table so so that this is a flow so it will uh, read the read the data from the data uh, scraping and uh, update that um, clean clean up some information and write into the excel that is a step uh, look yeah okay yeah sudhir i am done with this uh, technical interview uh, mm, okay uh, i have done a good job and uh, 
uh, our hr team will uh, contact you very soon thank you okay okay thank you thank, thank you very much okay.